I call Tim McIndoe. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate Mr O'Rourke for managing to inject a hint of controversy into Parliament's annual consideration of the subordinate legislation confirmation and validation bill, because that is no mean feat. I've only been here for four years, but I seriously doubt whether that's ever been done before. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Mallard assures me that it has. Well, as I look up at the packed uh, public gallery at the moment, I realise that this isn't a measure that is likely to be detaining viewers at home in front of parliamentary TV, unable to tear themselves away from, the, from their set. But nevertheless, Mr Speaker, this debate is an opportunity to acknowledge and bring to public attention the work of our Regulations Review Committee. Their tasks are often uh, conducted below the radar often uh, seriously dry sort of subject matter, but nevertheless they do perform a very important function. And although I'm no longer a member of the committee, I was a permanent member of the Regulations Review Committee for the whole of the 49th Parliament, and as Mr Chevelle acknowledged a few moments ago, for about two years I was the, the Deputy Chair. I'd like to think that Mr Chevelle and I worked very well together in that time, and I do acknowledge his uh, sterling efforts. In fact, uh, Mr Chevelle, of course, has retained the role in the 50th Parliament, and I'm not really not sure what crime he committed in order to be saddled with the task for another three years, but apparently he enjoys the work. So if chairing Regulations Review makes Mr Chevelle happy, I want to assure anyone who may still be listening that it makes the rest of his colleagues on all sides of the House delirious with excitement. <laughs> we are absolutely ecstatic at his willingness. He's taken one for the team, and we all commend him for that. His enthusiasm for the work when he spoke on this bill earlier in this debate was truly enchanting, if in fact heroic. The Honourable Chester Burroughs outlined the need for the subordinate legislation confirmation and validation bill to be considered and enacted by the House annually to ensure that various orders and regulations that must be validated or confirmed by Parliament do not lapse. So it is probably worthwhile to write into the record of this first reading that debate that the bill validates or confirms orders and regulations under a range of legislation. M Mr. Mr Mallard would like me to wind up. <laughs> would you like me to wind up fairly soon? <laughs> I, I'm, being, I'm being encouraged not, not to... But I was simply thinking what well, would be worthwhile to bring into the public arena the fact that we are under this bill validating or confirming. Well, he's a fine man. I certainly uh, enjoy his friendship and his support in his new role as uh, a councillor in Hamilton. And, yeah, I would say bring him back to many fields of endeavour, but probably not to this House any time soon. I will try for the third time to point out to uh, those who may be listening and who are wondering what exactly Mr Mallard is trying to say, that the bill validates or confirms orders and regulations under a range of legislation, including, and this is the exciting bit, the Animal Products Act 1999, yes, the high point of the speech, as Ms Upston has just acknowledged, the Commodity Levies Act 1990, yes, I think, and there's more, wait, there's more. The Customs and Excise Act of 1996, the New Zealand Superannuation and Retirement Act, which of course got uh, Mr O'Rourke so excited a few minutes ago, that's the 2001 measure, and the Social Security Act of 1964, the Road User Charges Act of 2012, and the War Pensions Act 1954. So I will conclude by saying there are very good reasons for regulations to have expiry dates, and there are equally good reasons for many of them to be renewed each year. Others have queried today whether this is the best way to do that. I'll look forward to hearing whether they can come up with a better way of achieving that objective. But in the meantime, I have great pleasure in supporting this bill's introduction. <laughs> Members, uh, this debate is concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Legislation, confirmation and validation bill, first reading. The question is that the subordinate legislation, confirmation and validation bill be considered by the Regulations Review Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Um, the Honourable Morris Williamson. On behalf of the Leader of the House, I move that the subordinate legislation, confirmation and validation bill be reported to the House by the 5th of November 2012. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm just only getting to my feet to check with my colleague who is the chair of the committee uh, that the 
uh, restricted date is one which has been the subject of discussion and agreement. And if he, if, if he, if he, if he nods, uh, then I'll sit down. I'm sure the debate at that stage will be concluded. Other, other, otherwise, otherwise, I will keep on going. Well, well I, I, I apologise to the member. I was drawn away to the Speaker's office at the Business Committee, and it's clear, therefore, uh, from either the nodding or the shaking, uh, that, that uh, we're going to vote one way or the other on this. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Call on Government Order of the Day number two. Marine legislation.